All right, what's on the bench? Uh, we have a calculator. Uh, I've never owned one of these before, and I saw them on eBay, and I thought, oh, I need one of those. Um, a few, about a decade ago, I had a very extensive collection of HP calculators. H, every single, I had every single model HP ever made. Some really, really rare, rare ones. You probably never heard of the HP 300 and stuff. There, there's some really esoteric things out there. And I had printers and I had all the HP ILs. I, I had all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, I got tired of it and sold it all off. Um, I had, like I said, I had everything. I collected for decades when people were kind of getting the newest and newest and newest things. Calculators just became junk and people were throwing them away. You get them cheap. And then they become fashionable again. Everybody wanted uh, the nostalgia and they started buying them up and the prices went up. So that's when I sold them all. I, I still have a few around, but uh, not like I used to have. Um, but this is an RPN calculator. Uh, it's made in Russia uh, back in the in the old days. This was originally uh, came out in 1983, and it was built from 1983 to 1992. This is a 1991 uh, model, or you know, reversion of it. Um, and we'll look at the back. I'll show you some numbers and stuff. It's all acrylic. Uh, and so it takes a little getting used to of what all these things mean. Uh, I do have, I do have a, a cheat sheet that translates all the stuff into, uh, into English. Um, and we'll run through a little bit. It is programmable. I, I haven't learned how to program it yet, so we'll just kind of show the basic functions. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty good calculator. Now the claim to fame of this, which is the Mark 52, there was a Mark 61 that came before, but the Mark 52 is newer. The Mark 52 um, went into space. Uh, it went on the Soviet uh, Soyuz uh, TM-7 spacecraft and it's being used as a backup for their onboard computer. So they, they trusted it for that. That was in 1988. Um, but let's just kind of take a look at the construction of this thing. It's, it's long, long in nature. Um, in the back here, it has a little uh, uh, cover and it does use AA batteries, uh, Costco batteries in it. Um, and uh, let me show you the label on here. Let's see if I can zoom way down. Let me, let me move down. All right, the Electronica Mark 52. Uh, I don't know what all this says. 1991, February, I guess. Um, or maybe the second week, I'm not sure. Uh, this says it's a six volt device. There's four AA batteries, 0.7 watts. And this is the my favorite number here. This says the price was 115 rupees. <laughs> or rubles? Is it rubles? I guess in, in Russia it's rubles, right? Rupees, rupees in India, rubles in, uh, in Russia. Anyway, 115, it's like two bucks, <laughs> two bucks. Um, so uh, these were built in a plant uh, when it was the Soviet Union um, in uh, some places in Ukraine. So now it got moved, now it's all just in Ukraine. This one came from Ukraine. And like I say, it's a 1991. Uh, it does come with a K. Oh, I didn't bring the cover into, into the into the garage. It comes with a plastic cover that just snaps on. Just a real boring, boring cover. Um, so let's kind of take a look at it. First of all, the display is uh, is vacuum fluorescent and very, very, uh, very, very weak. Uh, I think you can see that. Let me turn the room lights off, and you can just still barely see it. Let's change the. Uh, Change the exposure here. There we go. You're just starting to see. Oops. Just starting to see it now. Uh, yeah. So uh, vacuum fluorescent. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Let's clear that. My favorite test is uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Enter eight times. I guess that's five, four, three, two. So anyway, there you go. Let's turn the room lights back on. All right, so cheat sheet here. Uh, the the uh, switches, there's some slide switches. This is on off. Uh, this is uh, clear, write, and read. And this has to do with uh, E-squared prom that's inside this thing. It was the first Soviet calculator to have an EE prom in it. 
This one here is radians, grad, or degrees. Gradients are degrees. And I have it set to uh, degrees. And this one is either data mode or program mode. Like I said, I don't know how to program it yet, but uh, we'll just put it in data mode. And then uh, over on this uh, keyboard here, we have regular keys, and then we have the uh, function uh, yellow keys and the function blue keys, sine, cosine, tangent, la, 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 you know, all the, all the stuff. It's got some, got some interesting things in it that I don't quite understand, but um, it's got, an, uh, if you have a number, you can take just the integer part or take just the fractional part. Um, it has a random function. Uh, for programming and stuff, and then bitwise uh, stuff, no op, ands, ors kind of things. Um, it can do hexadecimal, but I, I, I haven't figured out how to do it yet. I, I read about it, and it said do this and that, and I couldn't get it to work. So uh, somebody can point me to something that shows how to do hexadecimals on this thing. That would be that would be great. So it is RPN, so it's a clear function. It has a stack. Uh, this R down arrow is rotate the stack down. Um, and I think there's a stack flip X and Y in here somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, you can have like X to the Y and stuff. So it is, it is RPN, um, and it acts just like an HP calculator. It does have some, uh, uh, memories in it, A, B, A, B, C, D, E. First I thought that was for the hexadecimal, but it's just, it, there's no F. These are, uh, uh, memory registers. So you can store things into A or store things into B. And that's what, uh, that's what this key does here. You can do uh, recall from A through E or store A through E. So those, those is what that, that's what that is. I like, kind of like the keys on the, on the actual calculator itself. It says uh, N to X or X to N. So uh, if you want to put something into the register, you take your X and you, so this is the store. And if you want to bring it back, I recall it's, it's that one there. So I don't kind of like that better. Uh, yeah. Uh, then there's functional go to subroutines run stop uh, return yeah there's kind of some weird things here single step uh, for all for programming and things um, yeah uh, that's just a change sign uh, put a negative sign on something uh, this is the exponent so if you put a number like 10 10 to the uh, seven times 10 to the third, uh, you would put in, you know, seven, and then you push this button, you put in three, and then there would be 7,000. Uh, yeah, it is pretty, pretty cool. I like it. Uh, a little bit more about the calculator. Uh, here's a picture. I'll, 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 I'll insert a picture here that you can see the insides. I'm not taking mine apart, um, but it has a, um, a switching power supply in it that generates a whole bunch of weird voltages. Some of those weird voltages are for the vacuum fluorescent display. Um, there's some hot kind of some high voltages, 40 volts or something like that, 28 volts, all these weird voltages in it. And then it's got a bunch of chips. Some are dip, some are chip on board, uh, kind of weird stuff. Um, I don't know exactly how many chips there are in something like five different ICs in it. Um, yeah, let's see what else, what else can we learn about this thing? Uh, so if you've ever owned something like an HP 41 calculator where there's little, uh, ROMs that you can, you can populate in the back of it. Well, this had, this came with, uh, you could, you could get four ROMs with it, a navigation ROM and a math ROM. And it was the sort, it was four different ROMs you can get with this thing. You say, well, I, I don't see where to put them, right? Well, if you turn it over, uh, over to this side and you, uh, flip this little thing down, there's a little, a little lat, uh, a little, uh, uh, door here that opens up and there's a uh, 2.5 millimeter pitch uh, connector here where you can just put in put in your raw module and there's another one over here that's a little bit smaller and then there's uh, actually two two drawers over here but there's they're, they're they don't work so some other model calculator use use these doors but this one has these two doors available I think one of them is for memory and one of them is for the ROMs um, Yeah, it is pretty nice. Let me uh, let me uh, turn the lights out again. And I'll just give you some calculations and stuff, and you can watch it run. And uh, just a new toy.
All right, there we go. Let's uh, let's do some calculations. Uh, 12 enter 36 times uh, 5 divide. Uh, you know, you can do all the all the standard things over here. 2 minus 3 plus. Um, then it's got like a 1. Uh, e to the 1 is, uh, let's see here, 1. E to the, there we go. Uh, it's quite slow. Uh, 2.718. Let's see, what was the clock speed of this thing? It's got a 75 kilohertz clock in it. Four, a four-phase clock. Uh, let's see here. We got uh, pi. There's some pies. Um, you can do 45. Let's see here. We'll do 45 sine. A little bit slow, but it comes up with 0.707. And then we will do uh, one over that. And uh, uh, we will square that. And we should get two. Eh, a little bit of rounding error. 1.9998. Um, let's see here. What if we took a 30 degree sign? There we go. 5.002. So again, a little bit of rounding errors and stuff on things. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. All right. Well, that's my new toy, the Electronica MK52. I like it.